Hey, hey, hey. Time for another out of this world story from our space. Picture this. You return from deployment, ready for the warmth of home and the comfort of your loved ones. But instead of a cozy welcome, you're met with chaos. Today on our space, it's time for some serious spring cleaning and maybe a new roommate. I'm in the army and I was stationed in a new city about eight years ago. I didn't know anybody at the time and then I met my soon-to-be ex, Danielle, at this clinic where she worked as a front desk admin. I decided to shoot my shot and asked her out and she said that she couldn't date anyone who went to the clinic because it was against office policy. Well, that drove me wild and I didn't stop pursuing her. And before you get at me by saying that I was a creep for still hitting on her, I knew that she was into me because she was asking another woman who had worked there about me, Shannon. And Shannon just so happened to be married to my buddy in my squad. My buddy ended up telling me that Danielle was into me and then gave me some information for a different clinic in the area. Long story short, I ended up going to a different clinic so that Danielle and I could start seeing each other. Honestly, it was great. Danielle was amazing and literally like couldn't have asked for a better girlfriend. She knew exactly what I was going through. She was patient with me at the start while I was deployed and worked away from home. She did cute things and would send me the sexiest crap while I was away. She was raunchy in all the right ways. She loved to try new things in the bedroom. She had a bit of a past with drugs and alcohol and had admitted that she was sober for the last two years and had been really honest with me about where she had come from and everything that led to where she was today. She said she was working at the clinic to pay her way through school. She was training to be a paramedic. It was totally up her alley. She loved to help people and she was so genuine and compassionate and selfless. It seemed like she really had her crap together. She was a tough woman when she needed to be. She was even a bit rough around the edges, but she still kept a certain softness despite everything she had been through. I did find that she was into extreme sports and stuff and she admitted that she had to get her rocks off somewhere. And even when it came to sex, she had a high sex drive, like high, even for me. And she worked out and kept in really good shape. We'd go to the gym together and train together. We entered marathons and triathlons together and kicked butt and we had fun doing it. Life felt good. We moved in together after about a year and a half of dating. We got a dog, Sky. Yeah, everything just felt really good. One night, about a year after she moved in, we were sitting in the living room watching Netflix. She turns to me and she's like, I don't want to be with you anymore. Just out of the blue. I was like, what? Where's this coming from? What do you mean? And she pulls out her phone and she starts reading out this list of everything that I've done in the past year that has pissed her off. There was really stupid and petty crap on there about me literally being loud in the mornings while I'm getting ready to head to work and not being considerate enough to stay quiet to let her get some extra sleep before her shift at work. Another was being on my phone at the grocery store while we were out getting food for a Christmas dinner that we were hosting. I remember this vividly. I was literally looking up a recipe to figure out the ingredients that we needed. Another was the way I spoke to her about moving a table into the living room for people to sit at for Christmas dinner. How I never bought her flowers, even though she has said to me before that she hates flowers and doesn't believe in that hokey pokey stuff. So yeah, I never got her flowers, but I would bring home her favorite thing of ice cream or cut up a bunch of her favorite fruit and make this dip that she likes to dip them in. Another time, I apparently didn't clean up after myself in the kitchen or I forgot to flush the toilet. Anyways, the list went on. And it was literally things from a year ago and some of the crap I didn't even remember. But I was like, okay, why are you only telling me this now? Like, why couldn't you have told me this when this all happened? And she tried to tell me that she was waiting for the right moment to tell me, but that we've been on the wrong page for so long and we haven't crossed paths in so long. I'm like, what? We literally see each other nearly every day when I'm home. At that point, I think I had been away for nine months the whole time that I had known her. So nine months and a little over two and a half years? I don't know if I did the math right. But anyways, there was a multitude of times where she could have spoken to me. And I'm like, okay, can we talk about this? Like you don't want to be with me because I forgot to clean some toast crumbs off a counter? Like what's going on here? There has to be something more. And she kept denying that there was anything else, but I kept prodding and prodding. And finally she was like, I just don't want to get married. And I know that you want to get married. And I'm like, how do you know I want to get married? And at the same time, I had been talking to my buddy and made some passing comments about how he knew that Shannon was the one and I was talking about the possibility of marrying Danielle and the thought had crossed my mind. And I guess he told Shannon and Shannon told Danielle. First of all, I said to her, I don't think it was any of Shannon's business to tell you what I was thinking. And all it was, was thinking. It was all just talking out loud. I mean, we haven't even had conversations like that at the time. And quite honestly, I didn't even know if I wanted to get married because of the nature of my job. 
And I did have a feeling that Danielle just wasn't into weddings and marriage and the whole thing getting locked down sort of thing. Apparently I was right. She went on to say that she wasn't the marrying type and had a lot to work on before anything like that could ever happen. And then she said that the stress of all this has been really tempting her to turn to drinking again. Honestly, I really didn't think that that was fair of her to say because I feel it wasn't fair of her to suddenly bring all of this up just now. Everything just about this conversation felt like she was trying to start a fight and really trying to get me worked up. And that comment really rubbed me the wrong way. But at the time, I felt taken aback and really apologized for any wrongdoing that I had done, but had kindly explained that I wish I would have known and I apologized that she couldn't feel safe enough to speak to me about this and that I wish she had come to me sooner so that we could work on things. And I told her that I wasn't ready to let her go because I loved her, but that I didn't want to be the reason she broke her sobriety. Long story short, she ended up moving out, but that really didn't last long because we kept banging. Within the first week she had moved out, she came over twice to have sex. And before she even moved out, we were constantly at it. It was like she wasn't even moving out at all. The vibe was all still there, and we still talked to each other like normal. It was all very strange. She would text me literally every day. And then I had explained that I was getting deployed, and I was going to be gone for three months. Well, during that three months, she went off and gallivanted and screwed whoever she met at the bar. And as far as I know, she wasn't actually drinking at the bar, but knowing what I know now, that was probably all a lie. Anyways, I didn't hear from her much in those three months, but she ended up telling me a little bit when I got back, which is why I know about the random dudes she racked up. Anyways, when I got back, she came over one morning and we had hooked up and had coffee and we're sitting at the table and she's telling me that she's really sorry for how she treated me. And she said she didn't know what she was thinking, but that she knows that she wants to be with me and she just got scared of the commitment for whatever reason. She said she didn't love herself, so it was hard for her to hear that someone else had really loved her enough to be with her forever. And it was just her trauma talking. She was trying to find reasons to leave me. I ended up taking her back and we kissed and made up, but we both agreed that marriage just wasn't in the cards for us and just made things too complicated and spooked us both. It didn't bother me either way. I just loved her and didn't need a ring to complete things. So it got to a few months ago. I was deployed and my buddy was with me. He gets this cryptic message from Shannon about something to do with Danielle. She's concerned about her and says that she thinks that Danielle fell off the bandwagon and is drinking again. I was like, the hell do you mean? And Shannon sends my buddy this blurry video that someone else had sent her and it was Danielle taking shots at this bar about three different guys. And I'm looking at this and I'm like, there's no way. And my buddy tells me that I should call her just to check in on her. So I call Danielle when I can and like, hey, just wanted to check in on you. And she sounds perfectly normal and she tells me she's been doing fine. She even admits that she went out with some friends that she recently met through AA. And I was like, oh, I think I heard that you went. I was like, since you brought it up, some people were worried that you had started drinking again. She's like, oh, who said that? And I was like, I'm not sure that matters. And she's trying to push me for names and she goes, Shannon said something, didn't she? And I was like, Danielle, it doesn't matter who said something. People were just concerned and just wanted to know that you're okay. And she goes, of course I'm okay. And what I'm doing is nobody's business. And I'm like, well, they're worried enough to reach out to you. Now I'm asking you because I'm concerned and you're my business, so this is my business. And we get in this huge fight and she basically gaslights me and says that she can't believe I'd think that she'd drink and she calls me a piece of crap and she said that I don't trust her and whatever. And I'm like, yeah, whatever. I'm the bad guy again. You can't keep blaming other people for your problems and I hang up on her. And I instantly regretted hanging up on her because I didn't want to really send her over the edge if in fact she had started drinking. And now that I know what I know, she was in fact drinking. But later on, she tried to apologize for speaking to me like that. And she said that the shots were just water so that she felt like she could fit in. She said the people she was there with were also sober and they were just drinking water. And I was like, okay, I smelled BS. I didn't believe it at all. But to cool Shannon off, I told my buddy that I spoke to Danielle and everything was okay. I knew he could see right through me, but I just wanted to give them what they wanted to hear. Anyway, I get back from deployment and I get home before Danielle does and apparently before she had time to clean up. The house was a disaster. There was actually old dog crap in the basement, like a couple of piles. And the house smelled of piss and booze like she had had parties. Sky looked thin and was just a sorry sight to see. I couldn't even believe what I was seeing. I felt so horrible. There were red solo cups in random places, some fast food wrappers. The sink was full of dirty dishes. There was even mold on some of the dishes. The fridge was empty and there was a bottle of vodka in the freezer. I pretended I didn't see that. 
I know that wasn't mine because I stopped drinking shortly after Danielle started dating. We didn't keep alcohol in the house. Then I'm going to the washroom and it's an effing mess. I didn't even want to touch anything. But as I look down, I see not only one, but more than a few condom wrappers. Well, I know they aren't mine because I haven't been home. Not only that, but that's not a brand I use. So yeah, I do my best to clean up the house and clean up what I can. Then Danielle comes home in her uniform and it's shortly after 2 a.m. I'm still cleaning up the house. For reference, I had gotten in at 11 a.m. So I'd been going hard cleaning for quite some time. I hadn't even stopped to eat. She saw that I had cleaned up and I had left the bathroom garbage full of used condoms and wrappers right in the coffee table so she could see it when she came in. And I said that I wasn't even disappointed in the condoms and the wrappers. What gutted me was the vodka in the freezer. And immediately she said that the vodka wasn't hers. She didn't even try to pretend about the condoms. She just sort of looked at them and shrugged her shoulders. And I was like, I suppose those aren't yours either. And she goes, I don't know what to say. And I'm like, I guess there's not much to say. And then I said that I don't want to be together anymore. I said, whatever you are doing to yourself isn't good for you. And you can't even blame it on me anymore. What you did was your choice. And you couldn't even be bothered to take care of Sky. Look at her. I told her that we were done and then I couldn't support her lifestyle anymore. And I wasn't going to be her scapegoat. As she was packing her crap, she tried to tell me that she had needs while I was away. And I was like, okay, but like, isn't that why they make toys? I wasn't having it. I said that Sky was staying with me and I didn't want to hear from her again. I said there would be no hooking up this time and that we were done done, like so done. I said she can hook up with whoever she's been hooking up with while I was away. And yeah, turns out that definitely wasn't water. I ended up talking to the person who sent the video to Shannon. None of those guys were from AA. Apparently she was having some group work activities with those guys while I was away. And yeah, I guess it wasn't just with them. She had been secretly meeting up and sleeping with other guys behind my back since the original breakup a few years back. She was also a closet alcoholic for the last six years, and it was her best kept secret, and it actually saddens me. I don't know if that's because I didn't know her and maybe it wasn't present enough, but I loved sober Danielle. She was fun, she was spunky, she was kind. It's been a few months and Sky is back to her old self and I'll never let anybody hurt her again. Ah, that's rough, OP. The house resembles a war zone. Not in the sense of valor and bravery, but in the aftermath of a raucous frat party. There's debris strewn everywhere, old dog mess in the basement, red solo cups like confetti celebrating the downfall of your relationship, and a distinct scent of piss and booze lingering in the air like a foul omen. Sky, your faithful companion, looks forlorn and neglected, a silent witness to the unraveling of the life you built together. But it's not just the physical mess that hits you like a punch to the gut, it's the emotional wreckage that cuts deepest. Condom wrappers littering the floor, a silent testament to infidelity, and there in the freezer like a chilling indictment of your shattered trust sits a bottle of vodka mocking the sobriety you once shared. As you confront Danielle, the excuses flow like cheap wine at a dive bar. Denial, deflection, and half-truth dance in the air, but you see through the facade. The truth is as clear as the betrayal etched in your heart. Your relationship is beyond repair. With a heavy heart and a steely resolve, you make the hardest decision of your life. You sever ties, not just for your sake, but for Skye's too. No more excuses, no more lies. I'm just sorry that it all had to come down to this. Honestly, yeah, sure, cheat on me, drink behind my back, but don't ever hurt my dog. I get it. What are your thoughts? Share them with us in the comments below. And thank you for joining us today on Our Space. Be sure to like and subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on our next video. See you soon.